In this section we're going to look at uh, forming our own functions and mathematical models. So we're going to look at a couple of definitions here. We have fixed cost and when we talk about fixed cost we're talking about something like rent or something else that does not rise or fall directly with the number of products manufactured. Variable cost is something that will correlate directly with the number of products manufactured including things like raw materials, packaging, and labor. Um, and when we talk about total cost, we're talking about the fixed cost plus the variable cost. And we're going to call that function C. So that's C of X equals fixed cost plus variable cost. Revenue is the amount of money that's brought in to a company. This is not profit. Profit, the difference between profit and revenue is important. Profit is P of X equals uh, the revenue minus the cost. So profit is all of the money that's brought in minus all of the money that's paid out. So it's all the money that comes in minus all the money that comes out. So whatever's left over, that's what we call the profit. Okay, so let's look at an example here. Um, a manufacturer has a fixed monthly cost of $42,500 and a production cost of $6 for each unit produced. The product sells for $11. We want to know what is the cost function. So we're going to call this C of X. Our cost function is our fixed cost plus the variable cost. And the variable cost is the cost for each unit. So that's $6 times X. Here we're letting X represent the number of units produced. The revenue function is the amount of money that's brought in. We sell the uh, unit for $11 each, so that's 11 times X. The profit function, and this is important, the profit function is revenue minus cost. So I'm going to do revenue, which is 11X minus, and here's the significant part, I'm going to put a star by that, when you're asked to form the revenue or the profit function, you're going to do revenue minus cost. Notice that I put the negative in front of the parentheses. This negative gets distributed we are subtracting every term from the cost function. So it becomes minus 42,500 minus 6x and then when I combine like terms our profit function becomes 11x minus 6x gives us 5x uh, minus 42,500. So this is our profit function. So really important, uh, we want to make note that when we form the profit function, it's revenue minus cost, and every term in the cost function changes signs. Then we combine our like terms to form the profit function. Here we're asked to compute the profit or the loss corresponding to production, production levels of 6,000 and 11,000 units. So this represents x. These are our x values that are going to go into our function. Okay, so we're going to put them into the profit function. So we have a profit of, let's see, 6,000 units. So what is the profit when we produce 6,000 units? So it's going to be 5 times x minus 42,500. So we're going to put that 6,000 in place of x in our function. Okay, we're going to just throw that into the calculator and I get negative 12,500. Now this corresponds to what we say a loss. We call that a loss because we are losing money, we're not making money when we are producing 6,000 units. So now we're going to test what happens if we produce 11,000 units. Assuming we make and sell all of these units. We're going to put this into our profit function and we're going to put this into our calculator and I get 12,500 and that's a positive value and this is our profit. So we've actually made money if we produce 11,000 units. Okay, here we want to look at the effect of advertising on sales. Um, here we are given the function uh, for profit. The quarterly profit of Cunningham Realty depends on the amount of money X spent on advertising per quarter according to the following rule. So this is our profit function. I want to make note of something here. There's a negative right here. 
that long line is a negative. So that's negative 1 8 x squared plus 7x plus 30. And here's something that's important. The profit and the value for x, the amount of money that's spent on advertising, are measured in thousands of dollars. And that's going to be important. Um, what is Cunningham's profit when its quarterly advertising budget is $28,000? So since x and p are representing values measured in thousands, when we determine, when we actually use x, we're going to have to use just the number 28. And you know that you've done this correctly if after the number that you plug in, you can write the word thousand. Okay, so that's 28,000. So since x is measured in units of 1,000, we're just going to put in 28 into our function. So p of 28 is equal to negative 1 8. And then we'll do our 28 squared plus 7 times 28 plus 30. So we'll plug in our 28 into the function. And we're going to throw that into our calculator. You could basically throw that in exactly as you see it. If you want to do it in parts, you can. Uh, we want to square 28, that's 784. Um, multiplying by negative 1 eighth is basically the same thing as dividing by 8. If I do that part right there, I get negative 98. And here I get 128. So whether you throw it all into your calculator at once or you do it in little parts following order of operations, um, you should get 128 at the end. And remember that this represents thousands, so 128,000. So the profit um, that is realized um, when the advertising budget is $28,000, the, uh, the profit becomes $128,000. So let's just go ahead and write that out. The profit is $128,000. Alright, in this example we are comparing digital versus film cameras. It says here that the sales of digital cameras in millions of units in year t are given by the function f of t equals 3.05t plus 6.85. And this function is, is given to us um, for years from 0 to 3. Okay, the same thing down here. Um, where t equals 0 corresponds to the year 2001. So let's just make something out really quick. t equals 0, 2001. Therefore, t equals 1 would be 2002. t equals 2 then would be 2003. t equals 3 corresponds to 2004. So we're talking about years after 2001. So that's uh, our function for digital cameras. And it says, over that same period, the sales of film cameras in millions of units are given by g of t. And we're given that function. First thing we're asked to do is show that more film cameras than digital cameras were sold in 2001. So since we're talking about a specific year, 2001, we want to use a t value that corresponds to 2001 in both functions. So first of all, let's evaluate this. This is part a in the digital function. So f of something equals 3.05 times something plus 6.85. Now we're talking about the year 2001, which corresponds to what we said t equals 0. So we're going to plug a 0 value in place of t. This turns out to be pretty simple. Don't even need the calculator. 3.05 times 0 is 0 plus 6.85. We get 6.85. Keep in mind that we're talking about millions of units. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing for film. So our film function, g of t, okay, and we're going to find out what happened in the year 2001, so t is 0 again, and pretty easy, 16.58 million units. So we can tell that in the year 2001, there were definitely a lot more film cameras sold than digital cameras. Okay, part B. Part B says, when did the sales of digital cameras first exceed those of film cameras? So 
going to draw us a little picture here of the idea that we're talking about. We're given um, this idea that over a period of time, something's happening with the digital and the film cameras. Um, so just from based upon what we know in our experience, we know that um, digital cameras are becoming more popular. So we're selling more of those over time. So we're expecting that as time goes on, we're going to sell more digital cameras. Film cameras, we know from experience that those are becoming less popular, so they're going down. So what we're looking for is this little moment right here when they are exactly the same. Once they are the same, then they kind of cross paths there, and we know that we're going to end up selling more digital and less film. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to find that little point there. We call that the equilibrium point, the point at which they are the same. So I'm going to take the digital function, and I'm going to set that equal to the film function. Okay, and we're going to solve for, that's t there. We're going to solve for the t value, the year, in which they are the same. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and just bring this term to the other side. So I'm going to add 1.85t to both sides. And we're going to subtract, bring this to the other side. I'm going to subtract 6.85 from both sides. Oops, 8.5. There we go. And when I do that, I get 4.90t is equal to, this goes away, this goes away, and then on this side I get uh, 9.73. And of course I'm just solving a very simple uh, linear equation. We just need to divide both sides by the number in front of t. Alright, so we get t equals, and I get 1.99, which will say approximately two years. This equilibrium occurs um, approximately two years after 2001. So this is when that equilibrium point occurs. So uh, two years after 2001, that would be 2003. So in the year 2003, we have this transition where we start to sell more film cameras and less, or sorry, more digital and less film cameras. So it says, when did the sales of digital cameras first exceed those of film cameras? And we're going to say, um, at the beginning of the year 2003. Here in this example we're looking at a piecewise defined function that describes the price of ivory in dollars per kilogram and this is compiled from a variety of legal and black market sources and it is approximated by this function here, this piecewise defined function where t is measured in years, t equals zero corresponding to the beginning of 1970. So we're looking for what was the price of ivory at the beginning of 1975, and then again at the beginning of 1990. So if t equals zero corresponds to the year 1970, um, 1975 would be t equals five. So we want five years after 1970. So that would be 1975. Okay, with a piecewise defined function, we're given particular t values for which each of the functions would be used t equals 5, we want to know where it fits in. And of course, t value of 5 fits in between 0 and 8. So I'm going to use that top function to evaluate the price of ivory in t equals 5. So 8.37 times 5 plus 7.44. And then we're going to tell that that's going to tell us the price of ivory in that particular year. And I get 49.29. Uh, dollars per kilogram. All right. Now, the next question says, what is the price of ivory in 1990? We want to know how many years after 1970 this is. And this is, of course, 20 years after 1970. So we're looking for t equals 20. So we're going to plug 20 as a t value into our function. Um, which equation do I use? Right, t equals 20 
fits between 8 and 30. So we're going to use the second equation this time to evaluate at t equals 20. Okay, we throw that into our function. We get $108.48 per kilogram. All right, so we make sure that we know how to use uh, piecewise defined functions.